In this video we're going to explore how an ordinary polyethylene jug like this jug which is just a jug of distilled water you can write on it with a sharpie like this usually without any problem because it's got solvents in it but if you want to put something else on it especially water uh, based uh, paints or other things they usually won't stick real well and uh, one way to enhance that adhesion is flame treatment. Uh, flame treatment is similar to corona treatment which is a high voltage high frequency discharge used in films processing. Uh, flame treatment though if we're doing a three-dimensional object like this is particularly convenient. It's usually need an oxidizing flame to oxidize the surface. This is just polyethylene. If you look on the bottom it says HDPE. It's uh, pretty much just a hydrocarbon. You need to put some oxygen uh, functionality in there like hydroxyl groups, aldehydes, carboxylic acid, whatever, make it more polar to get anything to stick. So what we're going to do is explore the difference between um, an oxidizing flame and a reducing flame for accomplishing this. Now to do that I got this Bunsen burner and the reason I use this instead of a propane torch like map gas like this is this propane Bunsen burner has a little mixer down here enable me to uh, have maximum airflow mixing into the gas stream or to shut it off basically and make it a carbon rich um, flame so this was particularly convenient so that's what we did and uh, first thing we're going to do is take a look at basically what the surface energy is and a little explanation of it then we'll show the video of the actual experiments hope you enjoy it thank you let's talk for a minute about surface energy surface energy generally is a indication of the amount of polar chemical groups in the surface polyethylene jugs like what we're working with are just a straight hydrocarbon and really no oxygen uh, molecules in the surface so it tends to be a low surface energy. Higher surface energy is generally what happens when you get more oxygen make it more polar into the surface. In this particular diagram which I've taken from a what density iOS app that I wrote for calculating what density for corona treatment that's just the energy per unit area and also by the way the surface tension or surface energy units SI units are newtons per meter. The CGS units are dynes per centimeter. But uh, this was a convenient uh, diagram, so I thought I'd go ahead and use it for this flame treatment experiment we're doing. In this case, on this side over here, before flame or corona treatment, say this is some surface, you put a drop of distilled water on here, measure this contact angle. When it's like this, when it's beating up, you know it's not wetting very well. The surface tension of the water is wanting to stay together and beat up rather than wet the surface. So we call this poor wetting high contact angle. After flame or corona treatment you get good wetting or lower contact angle here. See how it's flattened out and it's trying to wet the surface. So this is a higher surface energy uh, situation <clears throat> similar to what we would get after either corona treatment or flame treatment. So just wanted to go over that, just give everybody an idea of uh, the difference of what we're talking about with, the, with those terms. I'm doing this uh, flame treatment in the evening, so it make it a little easier to see the flame. I've got the mixer down here adjusted for maximum oxygen or air input. So this should be mostly an oxidizing flame. I've got this jug marked oxidizing and reducing so while it's oxidizing I'm going to scan it over the uh, let me get this chair here to help out a little bit over the over where I've got the O this is marked O It's just this mixer cut out the air intake here you can see that yellow flame you can tell it's a carbon rich um, flame I call it a reducing flame because it's limited on oxygen we'll run this across that 
try to do it about the same way and where the R's are. There's one there. I'm wearing these leather gloves for a reason. Almost burnt my hands doing this. So if you try something like this, be real careful. You can really start a fire or burn yourself if you're not careful. This is not obviously not optimized method here. So we'll see if those make a difference. But the main thing I want to do is make sure you can see the difference between limiting the air intake, what I call reducing flame, and maximizing the air intake. It's, it's all blue. That's really the best if you want to oxidize the surface. Hopefully you can see this. We're going to test this jug that we flame treated. See over here is an R. This is where the flame was reducing. And it's just this general area. It wasn't pinpoint. This O here is we were oxidizing here. This is textured surface, so we want to stay off of that. So let's put some distilled water in there. Um, this, what looks like a round circle here, is just an air bubble in the jug. Remember, I kept water in them. Help uh, keep from melting the plastic when I was uh, treating it. So we'll put some drops of water just across here. Whoops. Let's put a little more. It is a difference. It beads up significantly where the reducing flame was. You see over here the wetting effect. You don't get that over here. No matter what you do to these drops, they just beat up. That means the surface tension of the liquid, in this case distilled water, is significantly higher than the surface tension of that hydrocarbon polyethylene surface. So definitely a difference in wetting of distilled water. We'll try our acrylic pen on here. I got from Staples and probably let this dry overnight. Let's see if we see any difference in adhesion. Um, don't know if we'll see a difference in wet out. Sometimes you can with this pen. Um, and we'll try a little armor's glue on here. This will definitely have to let dry. I don't know if it'll be dry enough to check the armor's glue tomorrow, but it might be. So. We'll let these set, and when the glue is dry, uh, we'll see if there's any difference in adhesion. We can already see the difference in surface energy by the difference in wet out of the water. But doesn't necessarily guarantee an improvement in adhesion. All right, looks like our Elmer's glue is dry. Let's see if we see any difference side to side adhesion. We'll we'll start over here on the reducing flame side that's coming off very very easily a little bit more tug here there is definitely a difference so there is a difference let's see if we see a difference in ink adhesion on that acrylic paint we'll just use ordinary scotch tape that's all I've got right at the moment Oh yeah, look at the difference. Let me get the camera off of here so you can see it better. See how paint came right off the reducing side, flame side? Stuck pretty good on the oxidizing flame side. So, you don't always necessarily guarantee adhesion with better wet out. And, but in this case, we definitely did with that acrylic paint marker. And it's just this marker from staples well i hope you enjoyed that and uh, maybe learned a little bit about the difference between oxidizing and reducing flame and how it can affect the surface energy of uh, of an ordinary plastic like this so if you enjoyed this uh, got anything out of it please subscribe and uh, don't forget to uh, like our video thank you very much